So good morning, good afternoon, everyone. I am Laura, Media and Communication Manager at Gary Community, and welcome to today's panel, which is sponsored by Infobit. Uh, and we would like to thank Infobit for sponsoring it. Also, would like to thank Rafael Novak for sharing his presentation with us today. We're looking forward to it. Also, uh, we would like to thank Andreas Constantinides for uh, moderating this panel and all panelists for joining us. So let's not wait any longer and I will hand over to Rafael to share his presentation with us today. So hi everybody. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm uh, Rafael Novak. I'm in charge of uh, operator partnerships in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland for Infobit. And today we are speaking about RCS in 2020. I'd like to show you a pretty uh, pragmatical view on RCS from our Infobit perspective. Mm -hmm. um, we are a CPAS specialist, so uh, we have a view on, uh, on RCS as one of the of several uh, communication channels our program will be, of course, started with, with our CPAS view on it, and then we'll switch into discussing RCS more from the practical side. So uh, with this map, I'd uh, like to make a point. A global product needs a global partners to carry the cross continents enterprise communications. The more unified and standardized, the better. So whatever your clients are, we'll be able to help you in line with the local regulations and with local support to one of our 70 offices around the world. So we have built a truly global company who also understands the importance of local presence to help you design and execute your communication strategies and to advise you along the way. So this is the essence, actually. This is uh, something our CEO said once uh, we see the conversational interaction as the heart of communication. It sounds simple, but it tells you that from this time on, almost anything can be accomplished during a conversation. All the different communicators are bringing add-on features into the conversation and make even apps or web pages redundant. So right now we have a multitude of choices to communicate, which seems like a kaleidoscope, but typical for a time where a certain idea is crystallizing on the horizon and many innovative minds are competing to be on top. The current diversified complexity will be eventually channeled into the most seamless of solutions. And uh, when we speak about complexity, if you see it here, in an era where Clear communication has become paramount to a company's success, affecting customer satisfaction or employee engagement, not to mention the overall public perception of a company. The inability to see the dangers of pure communication looms like a, an iceberg threatening to sink everyone corporate Titanic. As we have increased the number of vendors and the channels of communications, we never stop creating instruments, decreasing the level of complexity. So the necessity to connect to a multitude of solu solutions is still given, but we are here to highlight a particular one. So that's why a CPAS solution is so critical in today's information over overload. So of course, RCS is an IP-based IP messaging service provided through mobile operator networks. It has found its natural place in our CPAS portfolio, right next to WhatsApp, Viber, or voice solutions. So traditionally, real-time communications have taken place in applications built specifically for these functions. For example, you might use your native mobile phone in an app to dial your bank, to have you, but have you ever wondered why you can't video chat a representative right in the same banking app? Or what happens when official phone hotlines break down during a pandemic outbreak. And that brings me to an example. So speaking of pandemic outbreak, this is one of our answers to a challenge for the German Ministry of Health that faced this threat in March and April. Our bot-driven WhatsApp COVID-19 solution replaced official emergency hotlines, which collapsed during the most critical Corona time. 
What you see here is one of the many automated flows which are still in use under the official WhatsApp number of the German Ministry of Health. So the relevant question here is, would it be feasible with RCS2? Our answer is a clear yes. So CIPAS systems, CIPAS platforms unify historically fragmented digital channels for superb customer journeys and bring brand engagement. And of course, RCS is taking its place in our portfolio and we see the potential with over 100 and plus projects and POCs around the world. There is a certain superiority which we observe with RCS, but we need to wait for the global rollout phases to allow the solution to fly. So this is the perception we have on RCS. So from our perspective, RCS represents the optimal feature mix, triggering higher engagement, more value, more security and better metrics. Engagement features are suggested reply, suggested actions, introduction of AI, the value features are brand name with verified business check marks, higher delivery rates, higher click through rates, pay on delivery. Security, of course, encryption, no SS7 hacking, no OTP copying. And the marketeer's favorite metrics, accurate delivery receipts, read receipts with open time, response confirmation for engagement. And for us, it's a daily work enabling the marketeer, marketeers to work with different communication channels. And we see it in a very practical way. We help our brands and consumers to embrace new opportunities with RCS. So you can craft customer journeys for personalized contextual communication with or without coding skills. And of course, in order RCS to fly, we are waiting for a few things, a few little minor things like the global rollout, competitive pricing and pricing models. And of course, the holy grail, waiting for the handset device independence. So in the meantime, we, we are working with our partners and uh, solution providers on growing the, the ecosystem and we create pilots and interesting customer journeys. So to be practical, let's go to the case studies. Uh, here we see uh, Papa John's uh, RCS solution. Papa John launched the RCS solution in November 1st, 2019 for the World Vegan Day and saw a 23% increase in their month over month sales rate compared to their standard channels of online and calling orders. So let's see maybe the practical demo right now. And of course, we, uh, we have a European example as well from um, France. Even car retailers have uh, discovered the RCS channel. And if we can show the last one, if it's possible, yeah. then, uh, then that will be the day for today. <laughs>
Yeah, as Andreas is uh, describing it, the holy grail of uh, Google uh, in terms of innovativity, we know everything by now, actually already for years. The only innovation for us, and we are very excited that uh, this year is bringing a lot of, uh, of new activations throughout the world. The only innovation for us is to connect to new countries, to increase the reach, to add Apple's ABC, of course, to the portfolio. As soon as this uh, threshold is reached and uh, we have a gigantic reach, uh, we are speaking about the true innovation only when the reach ignites this innovation. So from the practical way, we are ready and uh, we are working on pilots with our merchants and everybody is interested to join. Let's do the journey together. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the presentation. Okay, let's go to the official part. Good morning, good evening, guys. This is Andrew Salinidis, and we are going to have a marvelous panel today, hopefully, concerning RCS. And uh, I would like uh, to thank Infobib for sponsoring and Rafal for the presentation. Fabrizio, CEO of Poison, who is here with us in order to talk about. I think that we're going to be a little bit nasty with Fabrizio today. And also Miguel from uh, Belgium and Ricardo, that uh, they, are, they are online and looking at us. And I'm going to start with, uh, with you guys. And I'm going to start with Ricardo in order to introduce yourself and to tell us a few words about ourselves. What do you think? What's happening? Is it there in Portugal? Is it happening? Or are you still waiting for it? Yeah, good morning to all. Uh, I have to say that it's a pleasure after these months uh, of COVID to, to, to be attending an event, even if online. But uh, I'm very happy to see you guys there. And I promise that next time, if my leg allows it, I will be there with you guys. Um, so my name is Ricardo Martins. I'm responsible for global sales messaging in iBasis. Uh, and I have a background of a lot of years in the mobile uh, side as well, because I, I was uh, in Inosh, that is a mobile operator in Portugal. Um, well, concerning RCS, I think, uh, as, as Rafat said on, on, the, on the presentation, I think it's, it's a very exciting channel. Uh, and we are, let's say, waiting to see when and how it can really uh, uh, explode. Uh, because I think, let's say, we are uh, waiting to see how, how this can happen. In Portugal, uh, only Vo Vodafone um, through the group has it e enabled. Uh, but there is no there is no commercial offer available, and there is no inter interoperability. Uh, and I think that's how many operators? Sorry, how many operators do you have in Portugal? Uh, three. That means you can you can perform it if it's yeah. only one. Yeah, let's say in theory, yes. Uh, but I think let's say I think the main driver uh, uh, and for for RCS because we all know RCS for a long time. We know the, the features, we know the, the added value that can bring to the end customer, to the enterprise. But I think the main difficulty that uh, mobile operators or you know, aggregators have, uh, CPAS providers have today, is to, how to explain to the, the enterprises that we can avoid, the, let's say, the, the reach. So the, the, the penetration rate of handsets, then the lack of interoperability, and the different experience that we, this will uh, create on the customer base of the enterprise. And I think that's the main challenge I see in Portugal and probably also in other, in other marketplaces. We have good examples like Germany and Japan, where the, this rollout has been, um, do, uh, been done sooner. But in Portugal, I think it's really the question to uh, see how can the operators reach a consensus or how can uh, the end users be reachable in the size and scale that can enable uh, enterprises to really trust on this channel. I see. Thank you very much. Miguel, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Happy to see you all after such a long time. Um, so indeed, uh, in Belgium, we are the only ones uh, who have launched RCS. So we have a similar situation than in Portugal. Um, from a retail offering, it's uh, limited, so the functionality is enabled for a limited uh, number of handsets. Uh, no interoperability 
uh, towards other operators as this is not being launched um, within uh, the industry. There's certainly uh, a demand uh, because everybody sees the potential uh, from another enterprise channel with richer uh, options for the enterprises. And what I certainly see as a big advantage is a two-way. So the P2A being able to interact as a customer uh, in a more proactive manner, uh, that's certainly something uh, that is urgently needed. And when uh, this will be enabled, this of course will uh, integrate uh, nicely and can be of course an additional revenue stream uh, for all the players in the ecosystem as well. So there is a huge potential. Uh, but as Rafael said, it's a question of having multiple operators in the country. I think no enterprise will launch it with only one of the operators supporting the RCS ecosystem. Um, if that's uh, the case, then of course you see uh, from other geographies that this takes off. Um, so it's so just a question of time because the demand is there. It's just a question of prioritizing and seeing when it will be launched. Uh, so that's my uh, two seconds input for this. Miguel, how many operators you have? Three as well. And how many they are connected already? One, us. <laughs> okay, okay. So Fabrizio, do you think that it's going a bit slow? I think it's, uh, yeah. I mean, we hear that story about, uh, you know, the Holy Grail. It's already five years, the, years, guys, come on. It's yeah. 10 years, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I just would like to tell, I mean, from technology point of view, it's really a nice uh, piece of invention. But uh, disruptive technology normally comes overnight. Yeah, of course. And not uh, through 10 years. Uh, and then, um, as you see, if you have only one operator uh, in a country, uh, I think it's difficult that it boosts. And the other thing will be then, so imagine now we have in one country, let's say with three operators, all are connected, but I will see difficulties if uh, they don't have the same pricing model. So, you know, carry A charge this, carry B the, the other price, yeah, yeah, carry yeah. another one. Now go to the marketeers and uh, try to explain them um, what they have to pay, so at the end they don't know. In fact, uh, mobile operators are not even sure how they would build. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, I, you know, I'm, I'm not so positive at the moment. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I think that you are a bit right, Rafael. How do you challenge this thing with uh, with with the pricing, with the commercial policy? Because officially we know nothing. Around the world, it's a tough topic for sure. Yeah, I mean, starting about about the concerns. Uh, although it takes ten years, uh, it's still the only one solution that is native to devices. And if this nativity is uh, is expanded, then it's still the only one in the room. So it will work. Uh, the pricing problem, uh, from my perspective, in in Germany, mobile network operators are willing to discuss it, are exchanging with each other, and are exchanging with the participants of the market. So this is a good thing. There are many markets where one MNO doesn't know what the other one is planning, doing, calculating, and so on and so on. So obviously uh, it's a task for, a com for companies like ours to educate mobile operators as well, to bring the best practice to the market and exchange suggest pricing models. Of course, if it comes from the industry, we always regard it you know, as a bringing pushing down the prices but uh in this moment where everybody has decided to enter the market we are close to find uh, let's say a common ground at least in germany so the first pilots the first business calculations and um, revenue outcomes will show mm -hmm. i think that uh, if it was any other let's say uh, holder behind because now we're talking about google with all of these problems, all of these years, it would be vanished already. But just because it's Google, we're still waiting and we we'll see what, what the operators are going to do. However, uh, it's, it's, I think that it's, it's going really, really very, very slow because there's so many people that they have to make to take advantages. And it seems that Google doesn't have so, so good relationship with the operators. I don't know what happened. Uh, Fabrizio, he was talking about the disruption. I want to say that you know Telegram, the application we talked about yesterday. At, at this specific moment, Telegram and Darcy, they have exactly the same users, 400 million. 
Okay, RCS kept 400 meters, 30. But can you see that uh, things are coming out of the corner overnight, they're getting faster and more, much more efficient, you know? Anyway, uh, so, uh, do, does anybody know how many operators we have in, in the global? Is it about 900 or something like this? Around 700. Okay, maybe. I have to tell you that already there are 60 countries with 90 operators in, in, in RCA, so it's, it's really very, very slow. So I would like to ask um, Miguel, how do you think that the RCS are going to challenge all of the, the, the changes happening with the OTTs? Because Viber is sending rich messages since two years ago. WhatsApp is already doing fine, although that they have some problems. You know, Zalo, uh, Telegram, whatever. How, how do you think that? Are they going to find the time in order to be on time in the market, Miguel? They're already not on time in the market in the sense that, of course, you say uh, three years um, is, from my mind, even not that long. I thought it was longer. Um, but, of course, that's where uh, the problem of the interoperability also within uh, the ecosystem RCS itself, in the sense that there is the, let's say, Google-owned variation and there is uh, the other uh, RCS platforms and also interoperability between those is not always guaranteed one version to the other. So that's where certainly um, this interoperability will lead to the fact that SMS will be there for a very, very long time. Why? Because even between the platforms uh, with 400 million subscribers, you don't get to 700 billion, uh, 7 billion, excuse me, not exaggerating, um, is, is still a far step away. So that's where the interoperability between RCS between any OTT uh, uh, rich communication, uh, the, the footprint required to close that gap is still going to require a long time. And I don't think any uh, platform, certainly with the political uh, element which is being added now uh, in the United States, where some of the OTT apps are being uh, banned, uh, this will certainly be important uh, where the lawful intercept. Um, requirements are becoming stricter nowadays and that's where with a uh, OTT app this is very difficult to fulfill those uh, requirements and will uh, block um, from global uh, coverage uh, for any of them so that's where I think um, there is a delay possibilities are there uh, so there's a marketing benefit there's also the possibility uh, of uh, a new business case so this will be one of the channels which will survive because the footprint is there with 400 million. Personally, I believe that it will continue to grow at a slow pace. That's reality, but also um, will not disappear. So it will uh, continue to grow slowly and steadily, certainly with 5G being more and more propagated uh, in the market. Yeah, well, it's, it's not a matter of 5G, it works. Uh, all of the, the OTT is working with 4G actually also. But anyway, you know, according to, to Mobile Square, the um, RCS is going to have uh, an annual growth by 2023, 290%, which is okay. But by the end of 2023, only 56 billion RCS messages will be, uh, you know, um, transmitted in the which are really, really, really very few comparing to trillions of messages. Rafael, I would like to ask you, um, we have all of these delays with, with RCS, but on the other hand, you are having a very sophisticated platform with so many things, and you show us this, uh, this presentation with the complexity of all the channels up to the time that it goes to end, to, end to the enterprise customer, to the user. Uh, um, can you tell us what is the first priority in the now? The OTTs or the assets? I don't know if you're going to be fired out of it, but you know, it's, it's, a it's the company that is fast to market. Okay. So whatever reach has a bigger, let's say, in whatever fact, solution has a bigger reach uh -huh. and impact, we sell it immediately. Mm -hmm. So right now we we cash out gigantically on WhatsApp business mm -hmm. solution. 
So this is something that works because WhatsApp in, uh, let's say, a, a majority of European markets around the world is simply the strongest instrument to yeah. reach out in, in this way, in the two dialogue way, multimedia, and so on and so on. But obviously we are feeling pretty relaxed with our conversation solutions where we enable enterprises to communicate over all of these solutions as well as let them try out RCS for the future. Mm -hmm. So obviously RCS as a tool that for the mobile network operators is the only one instrument to play a role in this, in this OTT environment. And when it's supported by the mobile network operators with, with the solid support of mobile non network operators, it will have a strong impact. So we are preparing the markets we are allowing people and enterprises to play with OTT solutions, but we are pushing RCS strongly as well because it's simply with the help of mobile network operators, with the nativity where people don't have to download an application. And uh, we see from the global view as well, we see that Telegram is working better there, Viber is working better there, WhatsApp is working better there. For global enterprises, RCS will be a great tool when it has, mm -hmm. when the time. Comes. I think that this is the only one that remains. This is what we're waiting. Because if it wasn't globally, then it would be already out of the market. Fabrizio, what about your priorities in your platform concerning the OTTs and RCS? Well, um, I mean, we are a technology provider and uh, we, we, we develop all type of, uh, of channels. Um, uh, from the priority, I would bet more on the messengers because they're just more agile, faster. Um, I mean, on the RCS, we have the issue with the iPhones. Uh, so you, even if it's natively in all the Android phones built in, what we do with this, what there are around 2 billion of iPhones. Um, so I see too many obstacles. I also think that uh, RCS will remain. It will be just one channel among a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And um, look, we, we are talking about WhatsApp, we talk about Telegram, and we don't know what tomorrow will be. I mean, the youngsters, you know, we are all getting seldom in this room because we're getting old, right? Yeah. So a new generation is growing up. What are they using tomorrow? Is it going to TikTok, is it going to Snap? Uh, it's just um, a tsunami of new messenger coming yeah. to us. And yeah. at the end, uh, the marketeers, they will find the way where they can find uh, the, the right tool to find their audience. And I don't think it will be like we are used today where you have just one channel where you reach everyone. I think the new reality will be more ambiguous that uh, you simply have a lot of um, different channels where you find your audience. And yeah. that's what we have to find. I think that this is the most important remark that the market goes really very fast. And in one last year, we're talking about others, and you know, we didn't talk about Signal, we didn't talk about Telegram. Next year, we're going to talk about some others. Yes, it, in fact, it goes it goes fast. Um, I would like to ask uh, uh, Ricardo, yeah. how you are dealing with this in I basis? <clears throat> I, I think. Um... Ibasis is is um, is having a, a role that is quite similar to to a lot of players in the industry, uh, especially in the wholesale ecosystem. So we are actually an enabler between the different players, uh, <coughs> and we have a responsibility and a role uh, uh, of educating um, the different players. In the case of Ibasis, we are very close to the mobile operators, uh, and we think we can support the mobile operators. Uh, so that they can engage with the enterprise market with a proper solution. Uh, I, I fully agree that uh, we won't have one single channel. So RCS, WhatsApp uh, will be, let's say, uh, different channels that will be uh, available to the enterprises to use. And it's our role uh, to support the different players, the, the enterprises in one sense, but also the mobile operators to really address the um, the market so that uh, uh, we can find the proper solution for the market. And I would say, I would not uh, forget the A to P because it will be always the legacy and the native uh, channel because of, uh, let's say, technology differences between the different markets. 
and also be, be, because of the issues with security and the, the trust that people still have on this uh, A2P channel. So having a lot of channels there, uh, the role of an aggregator of a player like Ibase is uh, a carrier is to really to, in, to enable uh, different channels and to, let's say, to uh, give uh, support to the mobile industry and to the, uh, the ecosystem so that the, the different channels can, can, uh, can be deployed. Because at the end of the day, what we see now, especially with COVID, is that uh, the enterprises, they need cost-effective solutions to improve their engagement with the end customers. So this is not stopping. Either we have a solution to, to provide and to help them, or they will find another way because this need is there on the market. I see, I see. Guys, I have to mention something. Just because I'm so many years in the enterprise uh, messaging, uh, when we first talk about, uh, the, heard about the RCS, we're really very happy because it was the first time that we, we had the ability to send something more to the customer instead of 160 characters. The MMS plus, the MMS was, was broken by the providers because they put it in a very high price. But after this, this, this period, so many things happen. And now there is, there is messaging. It's happening already. The most important thing that in every country, there is the, 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 the messaging provider. For example, in Greece, the first medium in any Balkans and in Russia, I have to say, the first medium provider. That means if KLM wants to send, let's say, a message to somebody in Greece, he's not going to do it through the RCS. He's going to do it through Viber because this is the, the, the place to find. And all of the countries, all of the, the markets, they have their own messenger, you know? So that, that, this is the reason that I think that in the enterprise-wise, RCS is really very late. It's really very late. Of course, it's going to be there to send and... Uh, Things that are going to happen, but I don't really believe that it's going to be the boom. It's it's already gone. But, but this is my my opinion. In fact, it was Fabrizio opinion three years ago in Spain that we discussed about it, and I didn't believe it. But now I can see. It. So, how do you think that we can? What what the, the the enterprises can do about it? I mean, what is the best thing in order to do for reaching the customers and? dealing with the OTTs or the ACS or this kind of stuff. Uh, have you got any idea, Ricardo? I mean, the omnichannel thing, is it happening? And is this thing of what we can provide to the marketeers? Well, I think, let's say, the need of the enterprise is clear. They need, as I, as I mentioned, to engage with customers and to have a rich experience with the customers, with the end customers. And of course, uh, if you, if uh, through the demos we saw that the experience the, the experience that we have by RCS is completely different uh, that of the experience with a simple SMS or an email. So that's uh, it, it's. But at the same time, to cope with all these channels, it's not easy. Uh, and for the enterprise, probably uh, we should, uh, as a players of the ecosystem, to simplify the, those choices. You know, uh, the enterprise should not be worried if, she, if, if he needs to use WhatsApp, RCS, or, uh, or, or Viber. We, we should be able, as a player in the industry, to advise and to be close to, 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 to the enterprise to, to really make this, this decision uh, uh, easier and faster and on a time-to-market manner. Because if this is not happening via this way, the enterprises will find an, another way. Uh, and I think that's, that's uh, of course, the, the, the issues you mentioned that are probably slowing down RCS, like the, the difficulty in finding inter interoperability and the, to find the proper price. It's also very important because if we price RCS too high, then it's not a tool anymore. Uh, of course, that we cannot uh, probably price it as a simple A2B because it's a much richer solution. It has a much richer value. But there is this fine balance and this trade-off where is the, the proper price? I think it's the, the $1 million question because even if RCS is late, if we could solve this price equation together with the, with the because the technical interoperability is, is nearly there. So I think that what, is, what, what I don't see happening is what is the price for RCS? What are the models? Are they simple and clear so that the enterprises can understand it and use it? 
as a complement, as an alternative to the existing channels? And that's the question we, we would like to, to have an answer. And I think that uh, if these panels can help. Uh, I, can, I, I, I really agree with you because enterprise uh, marketers and enterprise, the enterprise are really, they want to have something very easily. This is the first and second. They are price sensitive. You have no idea how price sensitive they are. For 0 0.001 cent. And in this room, we can understand how small it is but how big is getting when you have some millions of messages per month? Well, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Miguel, what do you think about it, about the, the enterprise and the omnichannel stuff? Uh, the interest is there still, so that's uh, the, the good message about it. Um, omnichannel is required because there will never be a channel which covers all the rich communication needs. Um, as operator, we try to facilitate within our technical limitations as many uh, channels as possible. The monetization part, of course, unfortunately, uh, is still very limited in the sense that uh, as there's no interoperability yet in our wholesale national market, no uh, enterprise is utilizing it. But if you see the results from other markets, if you find the right price, right price point, it will fly. That's not a question. It's just a question, when can you reach all operators in the same country then RCS will take off and reaching the price point is something you work together with the enterprise and the ecosystem to find that level. And that's something where you, of course, make mistakes. You, you try and uh, maximize the value, uh, but in some cases you, you miss the ball. But certainly there is a willingness to do that and gradually will achieve it to have the right omni-channel pricing for each use case. And that's something where um, we hope this will be achieved also in our markets uh, very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, talking about pricing and uh, all of this omni-channel thing, you know, maybe RCS, they think that they're going to find the global Adidas and global Adidas is going to send messages to everybody all around the globe. In, in, in reality, it doesn't work like this because it's Adidas UK, it's Adidas Greece, it's Adidas, uh, uh, I don't know, Tokyo, it's Adidas, whatever. So it's not so... So maybe the brand is global, but the transmission is never going to be global because it's a, it's a different territory, it's different cultures. You understand what I mean? So uh, the price is really very important for the, if, if they're going to, if they're going to make it, because at the moment, if you see in uh, Balkan and in Russia, WhatsApp cost in retail six cents in order to send the message, six cents. It's rich. Okay, but Viber cost one cent in retail, the same which thing. Okay, that means, can you imagine if RCS decide to tomorrow and that they're gonna have six cents, nobody's gonna send. You know, it's, it's I think that this is going to be, the, the next problem that we are going to have, or the next issue that we have to, to solve is the pricing of all of these media. Fabrizio, what do you think about it? Uh, yeah, I think uh, the price is key, and uh, actually you're very right that uh, if you have, uh, let's say, uh, the, the, the campaign of Adidas in this example, it's, it has always a local flavor because uh, um, it's the campaign in Italy will for sure look different than in Finland. You know? I mean, the shoes are different, uh, the culture is different, so uh, I absolutely agree with you. Uh, price is, is key, you know, if you have a complicated piece, uh, pricing scheme, it's hard to communicate that. What I see as a, um, as a big advantage of RCS is actually that it would be a democratic platform. You know? So you don't have to ask permission to, let's say, what's up, am I allowed to say? It's got to be like SMS, you mean? Like SMS. The, the, the democracy of SMS. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And, and this is actually the, the thing what I really like a lot, where um, it could be that RCS goes through if, the, let's say, the other messenger platforms get a little bit too bossy and uh, try then to explain more marketing managers what they allow them or to do on the platform mm -hmm. or not. So um, that is really something where I can see a chance. But if the pricing is complicated, uh, and even, I mean, you said, you, you said RCS is six cents, uh, Viber one cent, 
Telegram is a zero sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're, they're offering crazy. for free. Yeah. And um, why not offering RCS for free? We'll yeah. find out something else how yeah. we can monetize. Yes, of course. Of you, course. Want that, you want that the you want that the P two P on RCS that it will boost. Offer it for free because WhatsApp you don't pay, Viber you don't yeah. pay, Telegram you don't pay. Why to pay for RCS? Mm -hmm. um, that's actually how we have to change also our mind. How we monetize this in the future? Because the mobile operators also have to face the reality. We are not in the old times where we could charge for every transaction. Mm -hmm. I don't think it will work because with this transactional work or conversional um, uh, approach, you have many more messages and you cannot have in you know, a one chat conversation that at the end, the check costs you 20 euro. It's, it's just too much. Mm -hmm. And then again, then you start to talk about the session-based stuff. And so, oh my God, I already had a year only to talk about it. You know? So try to explain that in the market uh, to all these marketing uh, it's, managers. It's very messy. It's, it's, it's you know, messy. Look, you are too, we are too busy to go mm -hmm. into a mission just to explain the pricing yeah, of yeah, the yeah. operators. So yeah. There are many other Most of the times we have getting paid. Uh, yeah. All yourself. Right, you know? Yeah. Good. Uh, I want to mention this, the democracy of SMS that we said, in order for the people to understand. Uh, you mean that you have the ability to send whatever you want. Exactly. Okay. Uh, because we know with WhatsApp, we don't do gambling, we don't do porn, we don't do, uh, do uh, smoking uh, uh, products and this kind of stuff. Uh, politics, religion. Okay. okay. Okay, good. Are we sure about it? No. No, of course. Mm -hmm. Because I think that they will do it uh, because it's, it's a matter of trend. I think it's a matter of being political correct or something like this. Anyway, for the moment, do, do we have any questions from the audience, the digital audience? No? It feels like no, our audience is pretty shy. They are pretty shy. Our audience is pretty shy. They are pretty shy. Our audience Okay, at least say hi, guys, because we feel so lonely here. Really. <laughs> okay, just jump with the chat, chat and say hi. So okay, it's time to close. I'm gonna I'm gonna address the last question to to all of the the people in panel. Try to to make in one sense what has to be done with RCS in order for for the procedures to go faster. And maybe hopefully somebody in Google or in uh, the, the network operators are gonna hear us, you know, because they are never in these panels, never. We're talking about them, but they are never here. Okay, Rafael. To put all the topics into one basket, mm -hmm. uh, we as the solution provider providers need to become marketeers. We need to come up with ideas and fast. We need to come up with Adidas or UEFAs, who knows, mm -hmm. with organizations like that that will show to the broader public that uh, actually it's on your phone. Yeah, you don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. Imagine that something happens to any of the OTT, some uh, hack, attack, privacy breach. It can happen from one day to another and they are gone. Yeah? Losing trust. Also. Security can issue happen. is, is yeah. a strong it's argument. Important. Yeah. So we need to be marketeers, we need to work with merchants and mobile network operators, and we need to do it fast. Mm -hmm. Simply that. Good. Fabricio? So the question was uh, how RCS could be successful. Yeah, I mean, I mean, what do you have to suggest in order to make it faster? Maybe somebody's going to hear. <laughs> yeah, that's a very difficult question. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, that's why we're here. It should be cheap, work everywhere, and uh, well, I think that's already a big task. Okay. Have to put more in the basket. <laughs> okay. Okay. There are already enough. Uh, Ricardo, what do you think? Give your advice. Yeah, for, uh, advice is a strong word, but um, I, I would probably touch, touch, touch base in two points. So education, uh, because I think part of the, the industry, uh, especially on the mobile side, they don't really know what is RCS. Um, so I think education is, is the first priority. And the second thing is that we start looking at the, the big opportunity for all, and not only to the slice we can take. Mm -hmm. Because if, if we want to take the bigger slice, uh, we will the, the, the opportunity won't fly. So if this works, it will be good for the whole ecosystem. It will be good for all the players. If we want, and this is why interoperability is key, uh, across platforms, across operators, across messaging channels. We need to make this happen. And if we are still taking care about what is my, my share, 
uh, and I want to have bigger share than Google or bigger share than, than WhatsApp or bigger share than the other operator in my country. That's who, who, who is a blocking point. So I think we should combine these two items, like educate people and li leave it clear that this is an opportunity. And we are already late. So if we want to make it happen, we should, um, we should enable it. I see. And, uh, and players like Ibasis, and uh, uh, we have a responsibility because we are in, in the ecosystem and we should do the, that work together with the, with the rest of the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. you, that's a very sensitive part of mine because that what you say about education and to educate the market, it's a very bloody expensive procedure that unfortunately the agencies, the enterprise, they have to do it and it costs a lot. And the people here remember how struggling to promote Viber in Uboto five years ago and try to explain to all the market how it works and what are the restrictions. And still, you know, the agencies, they are out of the game. I mean, they, they, all, all of the players, I'm talking about WhatsApp, I'm talking about Viber, I'm talking about RCS, they didn't have the, the wisdom in order to call the agencies and to ask, guys, what the end customer wants and how we can make it easier for you in order to, you know, these are really, really problems that I'm, we are really, really get sick out of it and we see that it happens. Yes, training the market is a big issue and I agree with you, Ricardo. Miguel? I think the most critical point uh, for success is availability. If you have more RCS available, all the elements which we see as blockers, education, pricing, um, will follow because that the market will auto regulate it anyway if you have a price point which is too high but the, the main point at this moment which you see in the most majority of the markets is not that all operators support RCS when this in more markets the main markets is supported other markets will follow and this trend has, has not speeded up if you say five years ago I remember my first discussion of RCS was 10 years ago and I was a firm believer uh, in the technology and the opportunity and the opportunity is still there, which is already a miracle. If you have some uh, opportunity which lasts for 10 years, has slowly grown and is still only at 400 million where you have a lot of the big groups who have uh, invested heavily in whatever platform they have. But if you don't have an interoperability first at local level, then at international level, uh, the opportunity will not uh, materialize further. So that's the first thing you have to achieve, availability of the uh, solution, device side, a network side, and then of course the ecosystem, and then all the rest. Uh, you first have to bake the pie before you can start cutting the pie and uh, look at the market share you're talking about, Ricardo. Mm -hmm. Okay. So guys, I can have a bet with you next year. We're going to talk about the same things. I would like to thank you really very much. Yeah, because talking, the last year we're talking about, you know, it's, this is how it goes. Anyway, Ricardo, thank you very much for being with us. It was a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Uh, Miguel, you too. My pleasure uh, of seeing from, all you. From, from I look Belgium. forward to see you soon. Well, yeah, hopefully we're going to meet to face. Other in another conference. Don't worry, we're going to survive of COVID. And if you see my, if you see my call from time to time, it's not COVID, it's Marlboro. Okay. <laughs> so, Fabrice, I would like to thank you very much for being here. And uh, Rafael, thank you for the presentation. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for sponsoring. And uh, thank you all audience here in the room and the people uh, digital. Uh, we're going to meet again soon. Have a nice day. Uh, Laura. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye. My pleasure. are all we are at the end of this panel today thank you so much uh, Rafael for your presentation it was so interesting and thank you Andreas for doing fabulous job moderating the session and all panelists both online and physical for joining and sharing your knowledge which is um, a lot of knowledge and also thank you for our audience both who are here with us today and joined us online and also in our panels later today and tomorrow so thank, thank you, you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. okay